We've all heard that radiation can, well, wreck you. And I'm not just talking UV rays from the sun. Obviously, it's important not to absorb too many of those, but still. I'm including all the much more harmful radiation in this as well. Gamma rays, beta rays, alpha rays. Why do we try to avoid this stuff like the plague? Hi folks, it's Falcon. And today, Waste Time asks the question, how does radioactivity exposure biologically affect the human body? There are a lot of reasons people are afraid of radiation. Too much UV radiation from the sun can cause cancer. It can take quite a while to happen, but, well, it happens. But that can typically be stopped by simply wearing sunscreen and not spending too much unnecessary time out in the sun. Obviously, don't become a shut-in because you don't want to get cancer. There's other beneficial reasons to be in the sun. And this section of the video isn't advice, it's just me setting up the thing that we're going to talk about for the next few minutes. Still, just take precautions and don't overdo, okay? There are things that are much scarier in pop culture involving radiation and that obviously stems from the nuclear bombs that every single country has pointed at each other still now in the current year, despite the fact the Cold War is no longer happening, and we've proven that we're the only country that is willing to use them, and that scares the hell out of everyone. Now there's a definite spectrum between sunburn and nuclear bomb, but radiation does the same thing regardless of how powerful it is, it's just the amount that it does that is in question. But it's also important to acknowledge that there is literally radiation happening at all times from all angles. It's impossible not to be bombarded with radiation. Not all radiation is harmful to humans, or falcons for that matter. The fact is visible light is radiation, so it's important to distinguish that we are talking about radiation that is powerful or in a massive level. You wouldn't be able to listen to the radio without radiation. Wi-Fi wouldn't work. And although we might be able to evolve some sort of way to see that uses sound like sonar, we wouldn't be able to see in color with that. You ever seen a 4D ultrasound, one of those things where they shoot the sound through a womb and give you a picture of the baby? Yeah, that's what that would look like. Definitely not as cool as radiation-based sight. There's also types of radiation that is marginally harmful, but the benefits that we get from those types of radiation, such as x-rays, which obviously do a massive amount for us in modern medicine, it's basically just really important to say that there's a deep discussion about radiation we could have, but the question asked is specifically about damage. How, how much, why, etc. So harmful radiation is ionizing radiation. That is radiation that carries enough energy to break electrons off from atoms or molecules, thereby giving them a positive or negative charge and typically chemically changing exactly what it is. So remember all the types of radiation I was just talking about? UV rays are actually basically where ionization starts. It's not all UV rays, it's actually the higher end of the spectrum of UV rays, but these types of rays are separated into three categories. Alpha, which can't pass through paper, beta, which can't pass through aluminum, and gamma, which can't pass through lead. It's important to note that alpha rays are able to penetrate your skin. They're absorbed by a couple of centimeters of skin, and because they're ionizing, they do have the ability to actually disrupt the atomic bonds to ionize those electrons that I was talking about. Obviously, an alpha ray is going to be one of the lesser powerful ones, but enough of any ray that ionizes can cause problems. Now, specifically, what are those problems? Well, in ionizing an electron, turning it into an ion and removing any atomic bonds it has, the molecule it was attached to becomes a free radical. And what that specifically is, is an uncharged molecule that is reactive and also short-lived. The free radical has an unpaired electron and is therefore looking to to pair itself or combine with another molecule. The human body is a finely tuned biological machine that is constantly running very balanced chemical processes. Having free radicals introduced into the system or just otherwise disrupting the way molecules interact with each other can cause any number of various reactions from literally getting a headache to the big C word that no one likes. Rhymes with dancer. I've also already said it in this video so I don't know why I did the rhyming device there. It's cancer. 
Now, when molecules are broken down in a manner that just disrupts chemical processes, obviously your body attempts to readjust itself and repair itself. This obviously takes energy and energy has to come from somewhere, so it causes your body to work more, at very, very least. But the biggest danger comes in if radiation damages DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid, try to say that three times fast, is a molecule that carries the genetic instructions that are used essentially to map out what something grows into. DNA organizes itself as a double helix. There's two strands that are attached with various pieces of information bearing genetic material. If the molecular disruption of ionizing radiation is able to sever either or both strands of the DNA and the cell, doing what it's supposed to do, repairs them but doesn't do it quite correctly, then the damage becomes irreversible and the cell becomes possibly cancerous. If it's UV rays, then it kind of really depends depends on the context, it may happen over time, it may happen because of a large exposure, and if you're getting hit with a nuclear bomb, I think cancer is probably not the thing you're that worried about as you see the mushroom cloud and the fire headed straight for you as a wall. I don't think you're going, oh, I hope I don't get cancer from this. I mean, if you survive it, you're probably like, ah, I'm probably gonna get cancer. Now, why is it important to understand how this works? Well, in your day-to-day -day life, you do have a choice as to how you handle all of the various low-level radiation that's still nonetheless ionizing. Now's the point where I give you actual advice, or rather just repeat the same advice I did earlier. Put sunscreen on and don't just unnecessarily sit out in the sun. Now, it's good to be outside. You get vitamins from the sun, but it's not wise to be outside sleeping specifically because you want to alter the chemical makeup of your cells to change the maybe color of them, because that can go badly. And if you are going to do that, wear sunscreen. Just always wear sunscreen if you can outside. And it's important that you also don't worry about radiation that's not ionizing. Like I said earlier, radio waves, Wi-Fi, or visual light. That stuff isn't going to hurt you in any way. How do I know that? Well, there's a lot of scientific research that backs this up. Going back decades and decades, this is not contested stuff. You can find tests on radiation hazards published in California Medicine back in 1950. A lot of this information is listed in the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics published back in 1961. A number of studies are still being done on this every single year specifically because it relates exactly to how our cells work and in many ways how cancer works. So don't just say to yourself, I know what I'm doing, I'll go outside if I want to. And also don't hang around gamma ray chambers unless you're wearing like a full lead suit, but I don't know that you have a lot of opportunities to do that so I don't know how seriously you need to take that segment of the advice but in every other aspect of your life just be careful have you ever had a serious reason to care about radiation leave it in the comments and if you enjoyed this video please click like if you're not subscribed to waste time now would be a very good time to do so we upload brand new videos all the time the best way to see them first is of course a subscription as always we thank you very much for watching this video I'm Falcon you can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the hero and we'll see you next time right here on Waste Time.